So today's topic is immunity and infections, different types of immunity, different pathways of how your body reacts when it is exposed to an infection or an antigen. Okay, some medical terminologies as well. You will find it a bit confusing, but already we have an uploaded session of this topic and today's topic also will be uploaded. So if you find, if you are from a non-medical background and if you find these terminology is quite dif difficult to understand. This concept is difficult. It is, e it is even difficult for uh, people who are from the medical background when they're learning uh, immunity or infections, T cells, B cells, pathways in which infections are taken care of in the body. It is difficult for them as well during their college years. Okay. So it will take time. Try to revise more. Try to con uh, re- visit these recordings again and again, you will understand the concept bit by bit, okay? So if anyone is joining late, help them out with the topic name. Page number is not that these topics are not from the textbook, okay? Concepts, facts, and information from these topics are taken from online different sources, okay? It is uh, put together just for your understanding, just for your knowledge, okay? What is immunity? Immunity refers to your body's ability to prevent the invasion of pathogens. And what are pathogens? Pathogens, it's a medical terminology. Okay, pathogen are any foreign substance. Okay, disease causing substance. Pathogen, like a dust, can, a dust is also a foreign substance. But if this dust is causing disease, disease to you, it's a pathogen for you. But the same dust may not be pathogenic for somebody else, okay? So pathogens, every foreign substance, you can't call them pathogen, okay? Pathogen are exclusively disease-causing substances, such as bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites, okay? Any micro dust which can cause diseases, and when people are exposed to them every day, okay, you, you take... Uh, to you inhale air from that atmosphere you are inhaling at the very same time you're inhaling a lot of bacteria and viruses as well okay but your body's immunity knows how to how to tackle them so you don't fall sick okay and but only few results into diseases okay every day bacteria and you are exposed to bacteria and viruses but every day you don't fall sick okay sometimes your body immunity is not that strong not able to tackle the pathogen that's when symptoms of fever shows up okay so the immune system is made up of different organs cells and proteins that work together okay organs mainly it is your lymphatic system cells wbcs lymphocytes okay and proteins immunoglobins okay, they all work together and they form the immune system in your body okay Now coming to different types of immunity, there are two major types of immunity, innate immunity or natural immunity, which is non-specific. Non-specific means even if it is a bacteria, virus, fungi, dust or any foreign molecule that has entered your body, the, the nature in which your innate immunity is going to tackle these pathogens is the same way. It will not have some specific dynamics with bacteria, some other kind of dynamics with virus. No, it is non-specific immunity. It has only one way of shooting and it will shoot all the pathogen in that one way. Okay, that is non-specific immunity. You are born with it. Okay, nobody gives this to you. You are born with it. Every child, every newborn baby is born with it. So that's a natural immunity, innate immunity. It was within you when you were born. Okay, acquired immunity, second type of immunity is acquired immunity or adaptive immunity. Okay, you acquire this over a period of time. Okay, you are not born with acquired immunity. Okay, but as soon as you are born, a child gets vaccinated. Vaccine is an acquired immunity. Child is not born vaccinated. You have to immunize the child later on. Okay, the child will drink mother's milk. The child is fed on breast milk. 
so the breast milk provides immunoglobulins to the child that is also acquired immunity over a period of time one by one day after day week after week year after year when vaccinations are completed and also naturally when the child falls sick okay in the womb uh, when, when the child is inside the mother's womb it is protected with mother's immunity as well outside it has to survive on its own okay so it has to tackle the child will tackle a lot of infections and while getting infection the child is getting immunity okay the only food always remember the only food that can give you immunity is mother's breast milk no other food in the world can give you immunity okay there is nothing called immunity boosting food or uh, immunity boosting products immunity boosting nutrients no you all you all require vitamins and minerals in the same way they function in your body in the same way okay the only food the only nutrition that can boost your immunity is breast milk okay especially cholesterol and after that breast milk so is it clear the difference between innate immunity and adaptive immunity there are some variations in these two as well we will see that uh, later is it clear to all So innate immunity, the immunity you are born with. Okay, it's a general protection that a person is born with, including the physical barrier. You have your skin, okay, you have body hair, you have nostrils, okay, hair in your nose uh, in your nostrils. Okay, uh, these all are defense mechanisms, these are physical barriers, okay. Uh, and saliva, everyone has saliva, gastric acid, everyone's boss, stomach secretes, hydrochloric acid, okay. And the general immune res responses, like inflammation, okay, like you, if you are from a non-medical background, you will be slightly confused with infection and inflammation, okay. So for everyone who is listening to the uh, class right now, just take your left hand, okay, the inside of the left hand, left uh, upper arm, not the palm, okay, inside of your left hand not the out, outside, the inside, the soft area of your left hand, okay, with your own nail of your right hand, okay, once one single nail of your right hand, try to scratch, don't hurt yourself too much, but try, try to give you uh, yourself a deep scratch, a single deep scratch on your left hand. You can scratch yourself two, three times on the same area, okay? What do you see? on your left hand within few seconds you will see some difference is there any changes on the area where you scratched there is redness is there is a the, the does the temperature feel warm or cool where you have scratched it is warm okay do you see a little bit swelling slightly slight eruption of on on skin it is slightly elevated right when this warmth was redness was setting in did you feel some pain since this was you you, you were prepared for it but if you were not prepared, you got scratched by mistake, you will feel the pain, right? If the scratch was happened, somebody else had scratched you, you will feel the pain. This you have done on yourself, so you, you are mentally prepared, so you must have ignored the pain, okay? So this is what inflammation is. This is inflammation. Redness, okay? The change in color, rubber, pallor, dollar, tumor okay these are the cardinal signs of inflammation there is redness there is swelling there is temperature increase okay and there is pain 
Okay, this is inflammation. And there is one more sign that is loss of function that happens in the later stage of inflammation when you scratch your uh, skin over and over again, again and again, again and again, just for imagine for one whole hour, you're scratching the same surface again and again. You will scar that area. That area will undergo scarring. That part of your skin will undergo scarring. Okay, scar formation will be there. Once a scar formation has set in, you will lose the functionality of that particular area. Okay, so this is what inflammation is. Is it clear to all what is the difference between inflammation and infection? Infection is pathogenic. Uh, a pathogen has to enter you, enter your body. Some reaction will be there. Definitely fever will be there in term, in, uh, when you are infected. Okay, bacteria, virus, fungi, parasite. Okay. These uh, protozoas as well. Okay, these can cause in, uh, yeast also. Okay, these can cause infection. Okay, so this is what inflammation is. This is just an example. You like this thing can happen. This has happened on top of your body. You can visualize it. Okay, but when these five signs, okay, the redness, swelling, irritation, pain, rise in temperature happens inside of your body, anywhere on your organs, tissues, that is internal inflammation. Okay. So although the immune system does not know exactly what kind of antigen is invading the body, it responds quickly to defend against any pathogen. As I mentioned, the immunity that you are born, born with just has one shot. Okay, It just knows to shoot in one direction. Doesn't matter what kind of pathogen has entered the body. Okay, It can only shoot in a specific way. Does not matter what type of uh, uh, antigen is causing or pathogen is causing the infection. Okay. And this is a long term immunity. As long as you have saliva, as long as you have gastric acid, you have your skin on your body, you have body hair. Okay. You have your mucus secretion inside your throat, inside your nose, inside your intestinal lining. Mucus secretions are there. Okay. As long as you will leave, you will have all these factors. So it is long-term immunity, okay, in which our body produces an antibodies of its own, okay. So immune system, innate and adaptive, innate immune, immune system cells are non-specific. They don't have a specific way of killing a, a specific uh, antigen, okay. They, are, they have non-specific action. One shot, one kind of bullet, bullet for everyone, okay? And response is fast. Within minutes or hours, you will see the response. And no memory, always the same response. It does not, your innate immunity does not have a memory system, okay? For example, dust allergy, okay? Your innate, innate immunity may consider dust as also a pathogen. Within minutes of inhaling some dust, you will start sneezing. Some people may have asthmatic attack. Okay, and after a week or a week again, again, you are exposed to dust. The same symptoms will come all over again. Your body will not think, okay, this happened last week. It's not that dangerous. We know how to tackle it. Your body will not think that way. Body, the body, the innate immunity does not have a memory. Okay, so again, the same response will happen all over again. So this is innate immunity. Is it clear to all? So these are the cells at a cellular level. These are the different cells that are a part of your innate immunity. Monocyte, macrophage, natural killer cell, neutrophils, mast cell, eosinophils, basophil, dendri dendri uh, dendritic cells. Okay, this monocyte, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, macrophages. Okay, these all are different types of white blood cells okay different types of white blood cells there are almost five types of white blood cells okay so these are the different types of white blood cells you are born with white blood cells if if a newborn is born with blood okay the newborn has white blood cells so these are the innate immunity you are born with okay your your white blood cells uh, dendritic cells is found in the central nervous system 
Okay, so same way how white blood blood cells will tackle infection, dendritic cells in your central nervous system will tackle infection. Okay. So types of barriers, there are four types of barriers. Barriers are also innate immunity. Okay. Physical barrier, it includes your skin, body hair, cilia, eyelashes, respiratory tract, GI tract. Okay, because respiratory tract and GI tract has mucus secretion okay these form the first line of defense in your body as soon as you are inhaling something toxic something allergic or even inhaling the normal atmospheric air it already has a lot of pathogens in it okay these pathogens will get stuck to the mucous membrane Okay, mucus secretions of your respiratory tract. Even if you eat some food, every food has some degree of bacteria. Okay, you don't eat sterile food. You eat food which is cooked at home or outside. Okay, some form of bacteria will be there. Okay, but the mucus secretions and hydrochloric acid in your gastric, gastrointestinal tract, your stomach and small intestine will take care of it. Okay, so they are the first line of defense. Your skin, first of all, it acts as a physical barrier. Just because you have a skin on your body, uh, infections will not directly reach your organs. Okay. The mucus coating in your nose, your ear, ear wax as well is a protective barrier which can trap pathogen before it gets inside the system. Then you have the physiological barriers like saliva. Now, physio what is physical and physiological? Physical is intact. It is already present. Physiological has to be produced in the body, okay? Saliva is produced, tears are produced, okay? And uh, they also have certain enzymes. Saliva has salivary amylase, okay? That can kill bacteria. Tears are salty in nature, not acidic in nature, not good for your bacteria to grow, okay? Then we have cellular barriers coming to the cellular level, okay? Uh, these are not visible by naked eyes. Definitely they are cells, okay? Other part of part whatever we have discussed, we can see it, okay? The cells involved in these barriers are leukocytes. Another name for leukocytes are WBC, white blood cells, okay? Erythrocytes are red blood cells. So leukocytes, these are the different types of five different types of white blood cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes. All these cells are present in the blood and tissues. Cytokine barriers. So in case a cell in your, in your body, a healthy cell in your body experiences a virus invasion, just imagine a virus has invaded one healthy cell of your body. Automatically, this healthy cell will secrete some proteins. Okay, these proteins are called interferons and they will uh, uh, form a, just, uh, just the name itself, you will find interferons. They will interfere with the uh, infection of the bacteria or virus by coating the healthy cell which has got infected and it will prevent the other cells from getting the infection okay like the the healthy cell which has the which which has the virus will undergo self uh, it, it will undergo self destruction but in that process it will try to safeguard the other cells from getting infected Okay, as soon as a one, one virus has entered the cell, the cell will get alerted. It will secrete interferons. Interferons will cover this cell, which has the in, uh, virus or bacteria in such a way that the virus and bacteria, whatever copies they are producing, it will not go and infect uh, out, out and other cells. This is a cytokine barrier because of interferons. Okay. So these are the different different types of barriers. Barriers means they restrict, they they stop. Okay, they restrict, they stop the infection. Is it clear to all? Cells involved in innate immunity.
phagocytes so these circulate throughout your body and they are always in a search for foreign substances okay these are like imagine them like a vacuum cleaner okay phagocytes are like a vacuum cleaner they, they the, the the like uh, nowadays we have the smart vacuum cleaner even you leave your home the smart vacuum cleaner moves around your uh, home okay and keeps cleaning the floors okay keeping your house dust free okay so these smart vacuum cleaners are available so phagocytes uh, have the same kind of mechanism they are circulating throughout your body through blood and your lymphatic circulation okay blood circulation lymphatic circulation they keep scavenging uh, the dust bacteria and viruses at at all the time okay and as soon as they find one uh, dust one foreign body substance or pathogenic in nature or even non pathogenic in nature they will engulf it they will swallow it okay and destroy it once they swallow it once the pathogen is inside this cell okay it will release uh, like uh, uh, it, it will release the lysosome and because of the uh, because of the enzymatic action activity of lysosome it will kill and destroy the pathogen that it has engulfed okay and that's how phagocytes keep defending your body against pathogen by continuously searching for what to swallow next okay macrophages these have the ability to move across the walls of the circulatory system okay for example you have blood vessels okay blood should stay inside the blood vessels okay cells will get the nutrient and other uh, su supply from the blood okay so blood usually stays inside the blood vessels macrophages are also inside the blood circulation but macrophages has the ability to seep through the walls of the circulatory system, it can seep through the walls of the blood vessels and reach to the nearby cells, reach out to the nearby cells, okay? As soon as uh, they, they release certain signals called cytokines, the same signal that cells release to recruit other cells at the site of infection, okay? Once the cytokines are released by either the cell or the macrophages, everyone it is kind of an alert system and alarm that goes on as soon as a part of your body one cell in your body or macrophages has started releasing cytokines it's it's kind of your body's alarm system has gone off immunity alarm system has gone off because of the presence of cytokines and all the uh, different uh, innate immunity or adaptive in immunity cells that will help support destroy this pathogen everyone will come together at this particular site okay cytokines because of the presence of cytokines your cells your immunity cells know where to come okay and how soon to respond and where to come okay so this is macrophages mast cells they are most important for healing and again defense against any infections Neutrophils, a type of uh, white blood cells, these contain granules, okay. Neutro neutrophil, uh, these leukocytes come in two, two formats, granulated and non-granulated. Some, some type of um, your, your white blood cells have small granules, you can see here. Neutrophils, they have this nucleus, which is three compartment nucleus. But apart from that, it has a lot, uh, like it has a lot of granules in its cell body. Okay, small dots you can see. Okay, so these granules are very toxic in nature. Okay, as soon as the neutrophil has come across uh, an, a, a pathogen, it puts pulls it inside, and these uh, the toxic uh, nature of these granules can kill the pathogen as soon as it comes in contact with this. Uh, uh, the, the toxic secretion okay then you have eosinophils these are also they also have the same granulation which are highly toxic for proteins uh, the highly toxic proteins that can kill any bacteria or even parasite as soon as it comes in contact the same form format of um, neutrophils are seen in eosinophils Basophils, 
दिस ऑल्सो अटैक मल्टी सेल्युलर पैरासाइट लाइक हुक वॉर्म टेप वॉर्म ओके यूजली बैक्टीरिया वायरस दे आर सिंगल सेल्युलर पैथोजन ओके दे ओनली हैव अ सिंगल सेल बैक्टेरिया एंड वायरस एक्सेट्रा ओके मल्टी सेल्युलर पैरासाइट आर देर लाइक टेप वॉर्म एंड ऑल दे हैव मोर देन वन सेल ओके uh so just like mast cells these also release histamine when you are allergic okay when you undergo any allergic episodes and when you do your blood test you will see an elevated basophil or mast cell levels okay because uh, because of this um elevated basophil or uh, mast cell levels your doctor can tell you that you are you actually what you went through was an allergic attack okay they can find out which kind of allergy you are going through because of high high levels of basophils so whenever you are having an allergy not just allergy even when you scratch yourself a, a mosquito bite happened okay or any insect bite happened and you are scratching yourself okay even when you are scratching your body you will release a lot of histamine okay <clears throat> then you have natural killer cells so they stop the spread of infection by destroying the infected host cells okay so just imagine one healthy cell in your body got the infection one healthy cell in your body got viral or, inf or bacterial infection now this cell is infected okay so what natural killer cells will do it will destroy that entire cell along with the pathogen okay to solve the matter and when the cell itself has died the the bacteria or the virus with, within that will is also no longer it is functional and that's how infection will not spread okay so it will destroy the host cell itself host cell means the cell in which bacteria or virus has come in okay then you have the dendritic cells dendritic cells are again found in your central nervous system Okay, located in tissues that are points of initial infections and these cells can sense infection even before the infection has reached the surrounding cells they can sense infection and immediately they can send message to the rest of the immune system okay by antigen presentation we will we'll show you what antigen presentation is okay they can sense in infection and before the infection reaches or spreads to wherever dendritic cells are located the message has has been given to the immune system that one antigen has in cause caused, caused infection or antigen has entered the body t cells and the b cells to should be prepared for destruction okay so these are the different types of cells found in innate immunity coming to acquired immunity acquired or adaptive immunity okay you don't get this by birth over time after even when you are exposed to a lot of infection your body may, makes antibodies okay that's how you get acquired immunity so this is the immunity that your body acquires or gains over time unlike innate immunity it is not present by birth so the ability of the immune system to adapt itself to diseases and to generate pathogen specific immunity okay innate immunity was non specific immunity but here it is pathogen specific immunity okay one example is chickenpox okay it is very 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 rare that you get a second attack of chickenpox once in a, in your childhood or at any time for uh, like a uh, time of your life if you have got chickenpox okay the occurrence of chicken chicken pox again is zero okay the chances are quite uh, equal to zero okay so that is an example of pathogen specific immunity or even when you get vaccinated okay when you get vaccinated against diseases the chance of that disease happening to you is also equal to very very close to zero okay so again you are getting a pathogen specific immunity once your body has learned once your body has the memory okay of an infection it will make sure that the other time when you are exposed to this specific uh, disease condition or infection it will not affect you okay it has a specific way in how it will deal with a specific kind of pathogen okay the way how your body will tackle uh, the zoster uh, zoster varicella zoster varicella zoster is the 
causative agent for chicken pox. Okay. The way how your body tackles varicella zoster is not the way how your body tackles rhinovirus. Rhinovirus will cause you common cold. Okay. Sardi zukam, what we say, common cold is caused by rhinovirus. That's the causative agent. Varicella zoster is the causative agent for chicken pox. Okay. Your body has a completely two different mechanism for these two different pathogens. Okay, because it is a pathogen specific immunity, your body will respond and react based on what kind of pathogen it is dealing with. Okay, this is acquired immunity. Our body starts producing antibodies to engulf pathogen and destroy its antigen. Okay, antigens are present inside pathogen. Pathogen means what? Bacteria, virus, fungi. Okay, they have certain chemicals. Okay. Uh, what makes them pathogen is their structure, cell, cell structure or chemicals that they get in, the toxins that they get in. Okay. So these toxins or chemicals because of which you fall sick is called antigen. Okay. It's usually not bacteria or virus, but the kind of copies that they make, the kind of toxins that they release is what's making you sick. So that's the antigen. Okay. So if as soon as you engulf the entire pathogen, as soon as the, 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 these cells will engulf the entire bacteria and they start destroying the bacteria, in the same way, in the same situation, they are destroying the antigen as well. That They are destroying the harmful chemicals and toxins this bacteria has as well. Okay. So when it encounters for the first time, when your body encounters for the first time, it is called primary response. Okay, you will face some severe sy symptoms here. The first time you get a disease condition when children fall sick for the first time. Okay, it's called the primary response. Once the body gets used to these pathogens, antibodies are ready to attack them for the second time. And the second time when you get, uh, get sick, you will not feel that much of symptoms as the first time. Okay, the first time when you got corona, COVID, or when you had coronavirus, or if anyone had COVID-19, okay, the uh, if you got COVID-19 second time or third time as well, the first time when you got could have been the most severe form. Third time, second time, third time, it would not be that severe, okay? Because now your body has the antibodies, okay? Even after vaccination also, your body has the antibodies, okay? And are ready to attack the virus or bacteria for the second time. So this is natural acquired immunity. Even without vaccination, without the help of anything from outside, your body itself learned how to tackle infection. Once getting, once by getting infected, your body itself learned how to make an antibody against this particular infection. So it's completely natural. Your body is making it by, by, uh, by its own. Without the help of vaccination, without the help of any superfoods or anything, okay, your body, just by exposing itself to infection, learned how to make an antibody and protect you. That is natural, naturally acquired immunity, okay? So, features of acquired immunity... Those who have got chickenpox again, always remember, just like how human beings are evolving, these pathogens are also evolving. Okay, when we talk about varicella zoster, okay, the kind of varicella zoster that must have given you the infection the first time and the kind of varicella zoster that have evolved and gave you the infection for the second time, maybe two different variants. Okay, your body may have uh, may have the memory of how to tackle the first variant, but not how to tackle the second variant. Okay, antibiotic resistance. This is the reason why antibiotic resistance, antimicrobial resistance is a big problem. Okay, along with us as and as and how our medicines are developing, as and how we are advancing in medicines, the bacteria, virus, okay, the antimicrobial uh, microbial system is also evolving. They are learning how to adapt and overcome the antimicrobials that we give. Okay. So coming to the features of acquired immunity, specificity. It is specific. The way how it will tackle or destroy a pathogen is very specific in nature. 
okay it it has this ability to differentiate between different types of pathogen okay it knows this pathogen is it harmful or not and it will devise it will make its own way it's very smart it's it will make your make its own way how to tackle it it has a different way of destruct, destroying bacteria it has a different way of destroying viruses okay because it understands this is not a bacteria this is a virus this is not a virus this is the fungi this is good bacteria this is bad bacteria this in acquired immunity is very smart enough for this okay so they have specific they have different kind of like in uh, in warfare we can say they have different uh, categories of weapons to use for different kind of attacks okay is it clear to all diversity it can detect vast varieties of pathogens ranging from protozoa to virus okay as i mentioned only when it can detect different kind of pathogen only then it can make different ways of tackling them okay so it has diversity in its way of attack it can differentiate between self and non-self Okay, it has the ability to differentiate between its own cells and foreign cells. Okay, this is where autoimmune diseases will come into play. What is autoimmune diseases? Your body's immune system is attacking its own cells because this feature is disrupted. Because in when when this feature of dis, differ, differentiating between self and non-self gets disrupted that's when you get autoimmune diseases okay your body immune system does not know is this cell our own cell or is it a foreign cell okay to be on the safer side it will consider everything as a foreign cell and start attacking your own body cells that's an autoimmune disease okay so usually acquired immunity in majority of cases it has the ability to differentiate between its own cells and foreign cells. That's the reason why the cells, the, we will see which all cells are involved in acquired immunity. These cells will not go and attack your gut bacteria. Okay, your stomach, your intestines, they have good bacteria, gut bacteria, gut microbiome. Okay, those will not be attacked because it knows it is, uh, uh, it is not harmful. The body requires it. Okay, it's a part of our body. It understands it. Okay. Autoimmune diseases are usually lifelong. Memory, once it encounters a pathogen, it activates uh, the immune system to destroy it. But it also remembers exactly what antibodies were released uh, for this pathogen. Okay, so that the next time this pathogen enters, the same procedure will be used to destroy the pathogen without causing any signs and symptoms to the host body. Okay, got some memory. Vaccines also do the same thing in your body. Okay, as soon as in India, as soon as you are born at birth, BCG vaccination is given, okay, to combat tuberculosis. And we all know the Indian atmosphere, Indian air itself is filled with this bacilli. Okay, mycobacterium tuberculi. It's a bacilli, uh, bacilli uh, bacteria. Okay, so uh, we are on a daily basis, whoever is staying in India, on a daily basis, they are inhaling a lot of uh, tub mycobacterium tuberculi. But because they have got vaccination, vaccination done, okay, the body remembers how to tackle the bacilli and you will not get tuberculosis. Okay, you don't get the symptoms of tuberculosis. So that's memory. So the cells which are involved in acquired immunity, which are majorly B cells and T cells, okay? And what are the main functions of B cell and T cells? P lymphocytes or T lymphocytes, okay? That are also the other name for it. 
B cells, they attack invaders outside the cells. Okay. Any, uh, uh, any bacteria or virus that are that have in, uh, entered your body, but they have not entered your cell in, inside the cell. Okay. They are still around the cell in the circulation somewhere. Okay. But they have not entered the structure of the cell yet. So that's where B cell will come and tackle the situation. T cells, what they do? They will attack the infected cells. Once the cells get infected, your healthy cells in your body, okay, once the bacteria or virus or any pathogen has managed to enter inside the cell and cause infection, okay, the T cells will tackle those infected cells. Okay, this is the major functional difference between B cell and T cell. So B cells, they develop in bone marrow because of that. Since they develop in bone marrow, we call it as B cells. B for bone marrow, B for B cells. T cells, they develop in your thymus gland. Okay, so T for thymus gland, T for T cells. So these cells are activated on their encounter with foreign agents. Okay, only when they are getting or they, they get that accidental brush uh, or they come in front to front. Okay. Uh, they come eye to eye between uh, uh, against a foreign pathogen that's when they get activated okay otherwise they stay low b cells will stay low okay so b cells immediately differentiate into plasma cells as soon as they get uh, a foreign particle or uh, as soon as they encounter a foreign agent immediately they will differentiate into plasma cells and they produce antibodies specific to the foreign particle that they have encountered, okay? So these antibodies will go and attach themselves to the surface of more viruses and bacteria of the same same, same family that, has, that these cells have encountered, okay? Because now only once, once the antigen, okay, or once the pathogen uh, or the foreign, uh, foreign um, agent has encountered a B cell, only then the B cell can make antibodies, okay? Without encountering a foreign agent, your B cells cannot make antibodies. Antibodies can only be produced only if you have an encounter with an infection, okay? Without getting any infection or without getting any diseases, your body will not be making antibodies. Remember that. B cells to make antibodies, they have to fight with the and foreign agent. They have to engulf, they have to swallow the foreign agent. They have to cut this foreign agent into pieces, study it and make an antibody exactly that can tackle this foreign agent. This is what B cells do. Okay, without encountering, without catching a foreign agent, they cannot make antibodies. Okay, so these antibodies that the B cells have made will go and attach itself to the foreign agent, okay? And once the antibodies had, has attached the antigen of a foreign agent, the destruction will begin, okay? And the immunity, depending on how much B cells you have, okay, this immunity is called humoral immunity, okay? Is it clear how B cells function? An uh, encounter with a foreign agent is important, okay? Is it clear to all how B cell functions? B cell will first swallow, will engulf the foreign agent, break it into pieces within itself, study how it, how this foreign agent is made, okay? And it will make an antibody, B cells will make an antibody exactly uh, how uh, it will help to tackle this antigen okay now how the t cells function they originate in bone marrow but they develop in thymus gland okay the uh, t cells they differentiate into helper cells or cytotoxic cells or regulatory cells because their function is to destroy the cells completely okay they are not looking for antigen 
they are looking for an infected cell that the antigen has infected. Okay. Thymus gland. Thymus gland is a gland that is present just below your throat. Okay. It is usually active during when you were a child and your early teenage. After that, thymus gland is inactive. It reduces in size when you are when you are growing up. It is only active when you are a uh, when you are a newborn. You are growing up into a, into your childhood and early puberty as well. Thymus gland is active. After that, it is inactive. So the T cells they form into helper cells, cytotoxic cells, regulatory cells, and are released into the bloodstream. And when the cells are triggered by an antigen. Helper T cells will release cytokines, okay, which act as messengers. Only when the cytokines are uh, are secreted, they exactly know where to reach, okay. Otherwise, there are so many cells spread across your body from your head to toe, okay. So many immunity cells are spread across your body, but how will they know where exactly is the infection, okay? From the cells point of view, the body is kind of an entire universe. Okay, cells are that small in size as compared to your whole body. How will they come to know where exactly should the immunity cells go and kill the antigen? It's because of the cytokines that are released either by the cells or by the T cells or any other helper uh, cells or other, other immunity cells. Okay, that can release cytokines as soon as they come in encounter with an antigen. They will release cytokines to send a message to all the cells to come here. Okay, this is where the infection is to come here. Okay. So these kind of cytokines initiate differentiation of B cells into plasma cells. Okay. And only when, when the, once the B cells are differentiated into plasma cells, antibodies will be released. Okay. So cytokines also has to, uh, has to be uh, released for the B cells to make antibodies. And also B cells also have to study the antigen. B cells should have an example of an antigen to make the antibody. Okay, these two things should be present. Only then antibodies can be made in your in your body. Okay, the cytotoxic C a T, a T cells kills the cancer cells. Cytotoxic, cytotoxic. Cyto means cell. Toxic means poisonous. It will it it is it will kill. Okay, so. Cytotoxic, uh, cytotoxic T cells means the cells that can kill another cell. Usually, this is how your body can regulate cancer. Okay, whenever a cancerous cell develops in your body without your knowledge, a lot of cytotoxic T cells are helping taking out the cancer cells so that you don't become a cancer patient. Okay, without, without your knowledge, this, uh, this is happening within your body. Okay. Regulatory T cells, they regulate the immune reactions. So this is how B cell and T cell function in two completely different situation. Okay. The only thing that brings them together, the only thing that brings T cells and B cells together is cytokines, secretion of cytokines. Okay. Is it clear to all the function of B cells and T cells? Our main motto here is antibodies should be produced, antibodies should be released. But for antibodies, it will not be released as easily as possible. It requires certain steps that B cells and T cells have to take. Okay. B cells have to have an encounter with, uh, with the anti antigen. Okay. It has to have an encounter with a foreign agent. T cells also have to come to the place where a cell has been infected. Okay with the help of cytokines if these two things have to happen only then antibodies will be released so we have uh, two types of immune response one is humoral immune response that is because of b cells b cells have encountered an foreign agent it has studied the foreign agent antibodies are released this is how humoral immunity works Cell mediated immune response means here the cells, infected cells are involved in showing this red light, red alert to the immune system to come here. This is where infection is come here. That is cell mediated immune response. 
cells are helping your T cells and B cells to come here as soon as possible. Okay. So humoral response about B cells, you can see here. So this, you can see some flower. Can you, is it visible to her? A flower kind of a structure. This is an antigen. This is an antigen. Okay, a bacteria, virus, or any an antigen present on a bacteria or virus. Is it clear to all? Is it visible to all? A yellow flower kind of a situation. Is it visible to all? Is the slide visible to all? Is my screen visible? Am I audible? Am I audible? Is my screen visible? Okay. So here in this in this uh, slide, we can see this yellow flower kind of a situation. Consider this as an antigen, a virus, bacteria, protozoa, anything antigen. Okay, harmful for your body. It can infect your body. So a circulating B cells comes in contact with this flower, yellow flower with petals you can see. Okay, this is an antigen. It engulfs it. It understands it is getting, a B cell is getting triggered as soon as it encounters an antigen. Okay, it gets triggered. It automatically, without wasting a time, it will engulf it, swallow it completely. Now, this antigen is inside the B cell. Okay, and B cell will break it into fragments because B cell inside it has lysosomes which will break down the whatever antigen it is there, it will break, it will be broken down. Okay, once this antigen is broken down, you can see the petals are completely scattered. It is the B cell is studying these petals. This the B cell is studying the antigen, the broken pieces of antigen. The B cell is uh, uh, studying it, seeing the compatibility. Okay. Histocompatibility using MC, MC, MHC molecules. MHC molecules means major histocompatibility complex. Okay. So with the help of its unique histocompatibility uh, complex, it is able to make a compatible antibody for this antigen. Okay. The antibody should be compatible, compatible to the antigen. Only then it will get attached to the antigen and destroy it. Okay, so because of the major histocompatibility complex, these molecules are present in all B cells. Okay, these molecules will help study the antigen in broken pieces, make an antibody very compatible to this antigen, which will be released. Okay, now here, here you can see the combination of antigen and the histocompatibility, uh, histocompatibility complex will attract mature uh, T cells. Okay, yeah, the broken pieces of antigen is still inside the B cell, but you can see here mature uh, T cells have come into the picture. Okay, T cells have got the message that something is wrong, something is fishy, something is wrong, some antigen has come inside the body. Okay, only when the B cell will engulf an antigen, T cell will get this message. Okay, because cytokines will be secreted. Okay, T cells will get the message that something is wrong, something is up. Okay. Now the cytokines secreted by the T cells will help B cells multiply and mature. Okay. The cytokines you can see here, it is secreted by the T cells. 
and because of uh, because of the cytokines being secreted a lot many b cells will be multiplied which has the antibody the copy of b cells which has this new found antibody which is compatible with the antigen that has infected you okay so this new uh, new antibodies copies and copies of antibodies will be produced by your uh, b cells once it is made into a plasma cell okay and these antibodies you can see, see this y y shape okay these are the antibodies these y sh y shaped antibodies are released into your bloodstream okay and the antibodies once released into the bloodstream will take care of the antigen which is still there in the body okay and it will clear the antigen out of your system so you can see it's it's a long action first your b cell has to encounter an antigen break it down inside itself study the antigen once the once the b cell ha has encountered an antigen it is broken down b cell is studying the antigen making antibodies out of its knowledge it's out of its uh, information this attracts the mature t cell because the T cell gets an idea, something is fishy, something is inside B cell, cytokines are being released, okay? And with the help of cytokines released by the T cells, more and more B cells will be multiplied, not simple B cells. B cells, now it has the information of what antibodies has to be made, what exactly compatible antibody has to be made. With that information, B cells will multiply more and more antibodies will be released into your bloodstream and these antibodies will take care of the infection. So this is a humoral response. Is it clear to all? It's slightly tricky. You have to go through this again and again. Then you will understand. Now coming to cell mediated, MSC means major histocompatibility complex. This MSC is a specific molecule found in the B cell and because of this compatibility molecule, a compatible antibody can be made for the antigen. Coming to cell-mediated immunity, cell-mediated immunity is initiated by T cells. Okay, humoral cell, humoral response is completely the job of B cell. Okay, when it comes to cellular response, T cells are into the picture. So cytotoxic C T cells will eliminate the infected cells from the body by releasing toxins and thereby promoting apoptosis. Apoptosis means, does anyone remember uh, anyone from the previous session? Do you remember what do you mean by apoptosis? Apoptosis means cell death. Okay. Cell suicide also you can say. Cells when they commit suicide, they, they kill themselves. Okay. It is called apoptosis. Okay. Why cell death, death is taking place? Because that cell was infected. If the cell will not die, Bacteria and virus will use the DNA, RNA present in the cell, in the infected cell, to make more copies of viruses, especially virus. Virus will use your DNA, RNA to make the make more copies of itself. But when the cell dies, DNA is gone, RNA is gone. The virus is left with nothing to make copies of itself. That's how the infection is controlled. Okay. Apoptosis is given on the slide. You can see that. You can read the statement. The cytotoxic, cytotoxic T cells eliminate the infected cells from the body by releasing toxins. 
okay and these toxins will cause cell death cytotoxic cyto means cell toxic means toxin releasing t cells okay these t cells will release toxins that will kill the cell completely when there is no cell there is no dna no rna when there is no dna no rna how will the virus make more copies of itself okay thus there is a stop to the spread of infection this is cell mediated immunity cell mediated immunity also depends on cytokines as soon as a cell gets infected with a foreign body cytokines are released t cells will know where to come which cell to destroy exactly which cell to destroy and t cells cytotoxic t cells will destroy that cell and you are saved from infection is it clear to all how cell mediated immunity works so acquired immunity again has sub variations acquired immunity that you acquire over the period of time active immunity passive immunity okay active immunity as soon as you get an infection or as soon as you get a vaccination your body immune system becomes active triggered alert the alarm system goes off for your immune system okay what causes this alarm system to go off either you get infection you fall sick or you get vaccination even when you get a vaccination you must know when you get a tt vaccine or you get any 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 vaccination for that nature that one day you will feel very fatigued sometimes you will have fever you can't lift the arm that got injected it is sore okay that's the effect of vaccination okay it has activated your immunity so it's active immunity okay it is in two forms natural and artificial okay when you get an infection on your own it's natural it's quite natural that you get communicable diseases okay somebody in your house has an infection you got an infection in a very natural way it's a communicable disease okay so that is natural active immunity or natural acquired immunity you fall sick on your own you got chicken pox you got tb or you got pneumonia okay Inf infected infective pneumonia common common cold okay coronavirus covid 19 this is all natural way of activating your immunity okay next is artificial when you get vaccination vaccination is a, an artificial immunity that you get antibodies are developed in your body in response to a vaccination in in both the cases antibodies are developed in your body one in a natural way you get antibodies because naturally you got infected you got signs and symptoms you got medication done but still your body is making antibodies to fight the infection in artificial also antibodies will be developed in your body by putting you through vaccination you have in vaccination what are what are we getting we are getting live attenuated viruses okay live attenuated viruses is given into your body these are virus live virus or sometimes attenuated half dead viruses enter entering your body so that your body can learn your b cells can encounter this by live attenuated by viruses and make antibodies in response to it okay so in both the cases antibodies are made but the way how you got the infection makes it either natural or artificial if it was vaccination it's artificial if naturally you fell sick you got contaminated you got infection from others it's a natural infection okay passive immunity it is passed to you okay it is given to you and in both this uh, uh, pass in passive immunity your body is not making the antibody antibodies was given to you okay ready made antibody was given to you in active immunity your body actively makes antibodies but in passive immunity your body does not make antibody your antibodies ready made antibodies are given to you in two ways passive immunity will come to you first is through breast milk mother's breast milk has antibodies okay 
So when a newborn baby and until the age of two, when a child is breastfed, it is getting immunity through the mother's breast milk, especially cholesterol. The first few days of breastfeeding, okay, the child is getting antibodies, ready-made antibodies, which the mother's body has that is been passed to the child. Okay, that is a natural way. Breastfeeding is natural way. It's a natural way of living. Okay. So that's a natural antibody. It is not made since it is not made in a laboratory or anything. Mother's body is making the antibody, and through breast milk, it has been given to the newborn. Okay, that is natural passive immunity or natural uh, passive acquired immunity. Artificial is when you get immunoglobin uh, injections. Okay, it is different from vaccination. In vaccination, you are injecting virus inside your body. Okay, but in uh, immunoglobin injections, you are not injecting virus, you are injecting antibodies in your body. Okay, artificially made antibodies extracted from uh, 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 somebody else's blood, antibodies extracted from somebody else's blood, it is made into sterile injections and it is given to others. Okay, antibodies that you receive from medicine, okay, or a gamma globin infection, injection or infusion that somebody who is sick they get okay so that is artificial passive acquired immunity is it clear the difference between both is it clear to all the difference between active acquired immunity and passive acquired immunity with examples Next is autoimmunity. Sometimes the immune system attacks its own self or tissues or organs that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes when the body does not know how to differentiate between uh, its own cells and other cells, it will attack its own cells. That is autoimmunity. Okay. This is called autoimmunity and type 1 diabetes is the best example of it. Okay. In type 1 diabetes, what's happening is, your body's own immune system will go and attack the pancreas cells, pancreatic cells. Okay. So destroying the pancreatic cells. When the pancreatic cells get destroyed, who will make the insulin? There is no way insulin can be produced. That's how a person gets type 1 diabetes. And usually majority of your autoimmune diseases will start in childhood. Okay. That's why type 1 diabetes usually happens to children and it's also called as juvenile diabetes, okay? So this is autoimmunity. Immune system attacks its own tissues, okay? It attacks our own host body or organs or cells instead of going and attacking a foreign agent, okay? Vaccines. Vaccines are made up of antigens. Antigens either from virus or live attenuated virus as it is given, okay? Of pathogens are given into the, are injected, okay? And vaccinating pathogenic microbes into your body, it is kind of you're deliberating your body to make, go and make antibody, okay? We are giving this microbes into you. We are putting uh, pathogenic microbes inside the body deliberately, purposefully, so that you go and make antibodies on your own, okay? And also the response produced is very similar, but the signs and symptoms produced will not be similar to the disease condition because uh, the, uh, in vaccinations, vi viruses used or antigens used are not in full power, okay? The power is attenuated in such a, such a way that it is enough for your uh, B cells to make antibodies without getting signs and symptoms, okay? Immunization is a pro uh, is also a process of providing resistance or pathogenic microbes uh, of other infectious diseases. Okay, it is administered into the body, and with this immunization, you are stimulating, you are triggering your immune system to make antibodies that will stay in your body and protect you in long term. So that is vaccines. And these are the organ systems involved in your immune system, lymphoid organs. Okay, these are the lymphoid organs. You have lymph nodes in these many places in your body. 
okay tonsils okay they are also lymph nodes tonsils adenoids near your uh, underarms okay you have lymph node in your groin area groin area okay near your pancreas pears patches near your intestine as well these are different lymph nodes present in your body so lymphoid organs these lymphoid organs uh, are are important to collect lymphocytes to produce lymphocytes to keep the lymphocytes in circulation okay so these organs are involved in defending your body against pathogens causing infection or and even spread of tumors to control the spread of tumors also lymphoid organs are important bone marrow blood vessels lymph nodes lymphatic vessels thymus gland spleen you can see where the thymus gland is below your throat okay in adults it's a very small patch of tissue because it has undergone atrophy it has decreased in its size okay because it is no longer used if you are an adult since the past 15 to 20 years your thymus gland is of no use so that's why it is gone undergone atrophy okay when you are when you were a kid thymus gland was active and it was producing t lymphocytes okay so the t lymphocytes which are present in your body to a certain degree it will not increase in its number you will you cannot increase the t lymphocytes because after a point of time whatever t lymphocytes you have you have to work it work with that amount of t lymphocytes t cells throughout your life because thymus glands are not there okay thymus gland is physically there but it is not active it cannot produce more t lymphocytes lymphoid organs are the site of origin maturation and pro proliferation of lymphocytes this is where lymphocytes are originated they mature they multiply and then they are put it into the they are they get into the blood stream lymphocytes in their primary secondary and tertiary stages of life okay they are based in lymph nodes and highest percent percent of lymphocytes are present in the blood, white blood cells called leukocytes no usually appendectomy will not cause any major issues because your major lymph nodes are uh, appendix is not a major lymphoid organ okay primary lymphoid organs so this is where maturation of lymphocytes take place they generate lymphocytes from mature to pro progenitor cells so, okay so they are called the central lymphoid organs your thymus gland and bone marrow are the primary lymphoid organs okay this is where the production of lymphocytes will start t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes okay the production will start here maturation will take place in thymus gland for t lymphocytes B lymphocytes will be produced and matured in the same bone marrow. Okay, but the thymus uh, T lymphocytes have to travel to get matured in the thymus gland. Then you have the secondary lymphoid organs. So this, uh, uh, these are the sites. These are the organs where interaction of lymphocytes with an antigen will start. Okay, and acquired immunity response will originate at secondary lymphoid organs okay your tonsils your spleen your lymph nodes present in different parts of your body appendix they all are secondary lymphoid organs okay here the initiation of lymphocytes getting exposed to antigen will start okay whenever you have tonsillitis okay whenever you have tonsillitis remember an antigen is getting encountered by the lymphocytes in your tonsils okay your lymphocytes are studying this antigen whenever you have the sore throat okay you swallow you have pain your tonsil tonsillitis is going on for you remember the lymphoid organs are active in your body okay they are encountering a lot of antigen you are studying the antigen and they are, they are in the process of making antibodies for you okay finally you have the tertiary lymphoid organs they contain very less amount of lymphocytes because majority of the lymphocytes are in the blood circulation 
now okay and their role comes usually in the inflammatory process not in infection the infection process is taken care by, care, care of by the secondary lymphoid organ tertiary lymphoid organs will come into play when there is an inflammation i show, I, I i have explained to you the difference between infection and inflammation earlier okay so when inflammation process has begin that's when the lymphocytes present in the tertiary lymphoid organs will come into action okay So that's about immunity.